Sometimes even the tools you use to work on your cars need a little bit of maintenance. So today I've got a jack that I've had for probably 12 years and the universal joint on it broke. So I'm gonna go through fixing that. Alright guys, so this is my old, very old, probably 12 year old Craftsman Jack. I can't know what the model number is, it's a 5240 if I remember correctly. So what happened, if you can see that, right in there, right here is where the universal joint goes. And then your handle goes in here and it's supposed to spin this guy right here. So it spins your universal joint and will either tighten or loosen this plunger that's inside the cylinder here. You see that little hole where I took it out of? So what that does is it either traps the pressure so it can't get out or relieves the pressure so your jack will go down. So when you crank your jack handle all the way to the right, this little guy spins, it will tighten this up so the pressure stays in the cylinder and then it will raise your jack up when you pump the handle. So what happened was when I was tightening it last time, this universal joint broke and it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of time on it. It was probably uh, from me over tightening it when I was using the jack, but at any rate, so it broke. Now I could only refine, I could only find a replacement power takeoff module. So this whole guy right here, that's all they wanted to sell me was a cylinder with this universal joint. And that was like 70 bucks. Well, so back in the day, I think I paid 179 for this jack, if I remember right. It was a while ago. Uh, but anyway, so the manufacturer of these actual parts sells a replacement. So Shin Fu USA, and I'll put a link in the description for that. All right. Shipping was more than what the part was. So what we've got here is a replacement. And I'll put a link for the part number in the description too. So this guy right here is a replacement for that. So, it's a pretty simple deal to take it out. The other one, all you do is this little guy right here, this is what holds it in there. This little bracket, see it goes around the top of the, the, top of the plunger so that it won't come out. So you take this out, and then all you do is screw the old one all the way out all the way. Now it actually helps if you take this top piece off first. Um, there's a couple of on mine that's just some Allen bolts, one on either side. So we'll remove this piece. It makes it a little bit easier to work on this. But I, for the life of me, can't find my Allens right now, so I'm gonna fight through it and get it done. So this, is gonna go up in here. See, I'm getting fluid everywhere. So this is gonna go up in this guy here, right like that. And then, I put this down, we'll be able to thread the new one in there. Trying to do this one handed isn't very easy. Go ahead and set the camera down so you guys can hopefully see this and I can work on it. All right, that's better. Put this in here to catch some of my fluid. All right. So the this will go right down in here and it just threads in there. It might get a little bound up in here as you're trying to get it in. So what I'm doing is just kind of laying this back. Like so. There was a little bit of resistance on that o-ring so i had to push that by where it seats to first and then this just screws down in there i 
like I said, this would be a lot easier to do if you took the um, if you took these couple of bolts out on the side and pulled this out of the way. But I don't have my Allen's handy, so there we go. You can see we're almost in there all the way. Now, when it's in that far, when the shoulder of this thing, you can see on that little shoulder that the capture piece sits on, when that's in there far enough, you can go ahead and screw that this guy back in there. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on. We're gonna tighten that screw down. All it does is make it so you don't back the the universal joint out too far. So when you turn your handle, that's what stops it from going too far out. So put that guy back in there. Put that plunger in there. All right, universal joints tight. I probably lost a lot of fluid, but it should still work all right. Look at that. Good as new. Yes, indeedy. That is awesome. Quick little $7 fix on that deal. I'm glad it wasn't more expensive. That was a pretty quick fix on that guy and for seven bucks that was a heck of a lot cheaper than buying the whole power takeoff unit and a heck of a lot cheaper than buying a whole new jack now i've got two jacks i think one's a just an off-brand steel jack but this is a nice low profile jack that i've had for a long time when your car is lowered it's a little easier to get this under the front of it but it is only a one and a half ton jack so it's not made to lift a whole bunch but it definitely does the job. Well, that's it for this one. Hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight on how to fix your broken jack instead of spending a whole bunch of money. That's kind of a lot cheaper, in my opinion. I'd rather fix some of my tools and maintain them. So the other good point is that since that universal joint, this one's probably not made as well as the other one. But when you do tighten your jack handle and loosen your jack handle, it doesn't have to be that tight and it you don't have to crank it all the way loose. If you crank it too loose, see like I've got right there that little pin bent up a little bit, then that will actually come out a little bit and you'll leak fluid there. So just be careful when you're adjusting your jack. You don't need to be Hercules to use your jack. Have a good one, and we'll catch you next time.